Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And with coronavirus cases reaching numbers that have never been seen before in Spain, politicians are scrambling to work out what to do next. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, coronavirus infections in Spain are basically out of control. And as we can see here, infections spiral out of control with nearly 100,000 cases in one day and incidence rises to 1,360. The rise in the incidence of the coronavirus in Spain continues unstoppable due to the transmission of the Omicron variant. There are already 1,360.62 cases per 100,000 inhabitants, according to the latest report from the Ministry of Health, which on Tuesday reported 99,671 new infections and 114 deaths. This is a new record number of daily cases since the pandemic began in Spain. As a result, the autonomous communities have adopted or are studying new measures to contain the spread of the coronavirus in the face of the increase in the incidence of the Omicron variant, which continues to soar. Immunisation with the vaccine, which in Spain began to be administered a year ago, and this month children aged 5 to 12 started to receive it, means that the number of cases does not correspond to a similar increase in hospital admissions and deaths. So there we go. As we saw in that article, infections spiraling out of control. Nearly 100,000 reported cases in one day. But if we can take anything positive out of the increase in cases, it is that hospital admissions are not rising as they were in previous waves in Spain. Now, with the increase in infections, politicians in Spain are scrambling to work out what to do. And one of the main things they're looking at is shortening the amount of time people need to spend in isolation if they contract the virus. As we can see here, the health ministry and the autonomous community study shortening the isolation of those positive for the Omicron explosion. The Ministry of Health and the autonomous communities will discuss this Wednesday at the Interterritorial Council meeting the reduction of the isolation of COVID positive cases three health sources have confirmed to El Pais final decision, which will have to define points such as the new duration of the measure, or whether it will be indicated for all citizens or only for those with the full vaccination schedule, will have to be adopted by the Public Health Commission following the proposal of the experts of the alerts panel. The alerts committee is scheduled to meet this Wednesday, although according to the health ministry, the commission is not expected to meet this week. We have to adapt to the new situation created by the Omicron variant. The circulation of the virus is very high and cases are growing exponentially. But it is also true that the vast majority of them are very mild or asymptomatic in vaccinated people. So the health department and the autonomous community is going to come to a decision whether people that have tested positive for COVID-19 will be able to shorten their isolation period. Because if not, with case numbers rising the way they are, Spain will be without an active workforce by next week. Now, with case numbers out of control at the moment, does it mean that more restrictions are going to come into force? Well, basically, it depends where you are in Spain. And as we can see here, Galicia, the Basque Country and La Rioja join the restrictions on the hotel and nightlife sector. The Omicron variant continues to affect this year's Christmas festivities. After Aragon, Cantabria and Navarra, Galicia, the Basque Country and La Rioja are the communities that have announced new restrictions on opening hours for the hotel and catering industry and nightlife, not only for New Year's Eve and Epiphany, but in some cases until the end of January. Catalonia continues to have the most restrictive regime of all the regions, with a curfew and the total closure of pubs and discotheques. So again, restrictions on the hospitality and nightlife sector in Spain only happening in some autonomous communities. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain, and we can see that accumulated incidence rate sitting at 1,360. Hospital pressure remains at medium risk at 8.1%, and there are 9,852 COVID patients hospitalised around the country. However, ICU pressure is now in high risk at 18.7% and there are 1,736 COVID patients, unfortunately, in ICU. Now, moving away from news about the pandemic and controversial Catalonian rapper Val Tonic is back in the press today. And it's because the Belgian justice system has ratified its decision not to extradite him to Spain. The Court of Appeal of Ghent has rejected the surrender to Spain of the rapper Josep Miquel Arenas, alias Val Tonic, 
by definitively ruling out this Tuesday the crime of threats after having previously dismissed the charges of insulting the Crown and glorification of terrorism for which he is also wanted by the Spanish justice system. This confirms the initial refusal of the Belgian judges not to extradite him. In October, the Belgian Constitutional Court stopped Valtonic, who was sentenced by the Audencia Nacional to three years and six months in prison for insulting the king and praising Eta and the Grappo in his songs from being handed over to Spain. So Valtonic lives to rap another day, albeit outside Spain. And another ruling going against Spain's justice system. Now in the middle of the worst pandemic in living memory, the Spanish government yesterday decided that it would be a good idea to decorate 23 former ministers. And as we can see here, the government decorates 23 former ministers, including Galladón, Pablo Iglesias, Abelos, and Maxim Huerta. The Council of Ministers on Tuesday approved royal decrees to award the Grand Cross of the Royal and Distinguished Spanish Order of Carlos III to 23 former ministers of governments led by the PP and PSOE, including Alberto Ruiz Galladón, Pablo Iglesias, and José Luis Abelos. The government usually awards this decoration to former ministers, the highest honorary distinction among Spanish civil orders, and whose aim is to reward citizens whose efforts, initiatives, and work have rendered eminent and extraordinary services to the nation according to the regulations. So, there we go. The government deciding to decorate 23 former ministers from both the PSOE and the PP political parties. And let's be honest, I can understand people like Ruiz Galledon or Abelos being decorated, but Maxim Huerta. And finally, the story of the Spanish singer Carlos Marin of El Divo fame, who unfortunately died last week in a Manchester hospital from COVID complications. And according to his family, if he had been in Spain, he could have survived. A fortnight after his admission to the Manchester Royal Hospital, Carlos Marin of band Il Divo died after contracting COVID-19. Early last week, his sister Rosa confirmed that the singer had contracted the Delta variant, which had fatally affected his lungs, leaving him in an induced coma in the intensive care unit of the hospital. Alberto Martin, Carlos Marin's lawyer, who helped the Spaniard take a craze fan to court in September after she wrote a series of letters described as highly sexual and left him enduring sleepless nights with death threats, told the Daily Mail I spoke to his mother on the day he died and she was saying that she was convinced that if he had been in Spain, he could have survived. So Mr. Marin's family, critical of the Manchester hospital where he unfortunately passed away. And they think that he would have been better cared for and possibly would have survived if he had been in Spain. But honestly, who knows? Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Mike, Feliz Navidad Stuart, hope you have had a good Christmas. Managed to escape the hysteria of the Johnson regime and successfully arrived in Murcia. The sun is shining, 75 degrees Fahrenheit here today, Monday. Plane was three quarters full, so I guess a lot of people had the same idea. The paperwork is not too bad for getting in if you can prove vaccination status, and at least it's free. Yeah, Mike, thanks for the comment, and good to see that you have escaped the UK and have made it to Murcia. And as you said, the sun is shining. What more do you need? In fact, I read today that it's going to be one of the warmest New Year's on record. So that's something to look forward to also. So I hope all goes well and you enjoy your holiday in that wonderful part of Spain that is Murcia. One here from Anne. It would be interesting to know what proportion of people in Spain support the monarchy. I remember taking a girl from Galicia while on holiday in Ibiza a few years ago and she didn't have a good word to say about them. Mind you, she was equally scornful about Andalusia, disliking the bullfighting traditions and various other activities associated with the area. It was fascinating listening to her because it was probably the first time it became clear that there are big differences between some of the autonomous communities. Yeah, and thanks for the comment, and you're right, there are some big differences between autonomous communities in Spain, especially between the ones in the north and the ones in the south. I've also met people from the north of Spain that are not happy that traditions like bullfighting get so much publicity. And when it comes to the royal family, you can also find a lot of anti-royal sentiment, especially in some of the autonomous communities that won independence from Spain, for example, Catalonia or the Basque Country. So different ideas, different opinions on things according to where you are in the country. One here from Harry, wishing you and your family every good wish for Christmas and New Year. The work you put in to produce your daily blogs is very much appreciated. Love the way you put down those that pass criticism. Aussies do it best of all. Now cricket. Having been involved with a well-known Australian sports company for over 20 years, now long retired, I have special interest in the Ashes. Can the boys England beat the men at Melbourne? Always look forward to your daily vlogs. Keep up the good work. Brian from Andalusia.
Yeah, Brian, thanks for the comment. And unfortunately for all the England cricket supporters out there, we already know the result of that Melbourne test and England got absolutely smashed. But, and as an Aussie cricket supporter, I was thrilled to bits. In fact, I had a smile from ear to ear watching the highlights yesterday. So let's hope for the sake of test cricket, England can get it together for the Sydney test, which starts in a few days time, but I wouldn't put money on it. One here from my media, as long as the rest of the world can have royalty, why should Spain miss out? By the way, sounds like you might be able to come back to WA sooner than you thought. A backpacker traveling from Queensland wrecked McGowan's strategy. Yeah, my media, thanks for the comment and thanks for adding to the debate about whether Spain needs or not a royal family. I asked the question the other day whether or not royal families are still relevant in 2021 and beyond, and replies in the comment section seem to be fairly mixed. But when it comes to the Spanish royal family, as long as they fly under the radar and keep a low profile, I don't think too many people care, but as we know, that's something that they haven't been able to do recently, and they've been in the press for all the wrong reasons. And when it comes to Western Australia and Premier McGowan's COVID strategy, he does seem to have a lot on his hands at the moment with five recorded cases, all caused, I believe, as you mentioned, by a backpacker that flew from Queensland to Western Australia. And finally, one here from Alan, Feliz Navidad, Stu. Thank you for all your videos for 2021. Looking forward to your videos for 2022. Keep safe, Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year too. Yeah, Alan, thanks for the comment, and glad that you liked the videos that I have put out in 2021. And don't worry, plenty more content on the way in 2022. I also hope that you and everybody out there had a wonderful Christmas period and I wish you all a happy new year and a safe 2022. And Mia would also like to wish everybody a fantastic 2022. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. We'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.